Now, we will look at another theorem which can be considered the dual of the Thevenin's theorem. It is known as Norton's theorem. Just like Thevenin's theorem gave us a representation of a complicated circuit at two terminals with a single voltage source and a single series resistance. Norton's theorem will also give us an equivalent circuit at two terminals which consists of a single current source and a single resistance in parallel. Okay. And the derivation of this equivalent is similar to the derivation of the Thevenin's equivalent. Okay. So, let us say we have a network N consisting of independent sources. I will show them by a single source like this resistors and linear control sources and it is connected to some other circuit. Okay. Let me call this my circuit. Now, what we wanted was a representation of this circuit N at the terminals 1 and 1 prime. So, it can be a stand in for the circuit regardless of what you connect to it. Now, if you recall while deriving Thevenin's equivalent, we replace this with a current source based on substitution theorem. What we will do here instead is let me again say this voltage happens to be V L and this current is I L. I will replace it with a voltage source instead. Okay. So, I will substitute this whole thing by the voltage source whose value is the voltage that actually occurs in the circuit V L. As before, we see that the derivation will be independent of whatever V L is. So, it applies to any circuit, Okay, anything that you connect. Again, this is the circuit for which we are computing the equivalent and this circuit needs to have only independent sources, linear resistors and linear control sources. This can be anything, it does not matter what it is, Okay, because whatever it is, between these two terminals, it can be substituted by a voltage or current source of that specific value, whatever voltage or current it is drawing. And finally, whatever we are going to derive for this, the equivalent for this will be independent of the value of V L. Okay. So, let us take this and proceed as before. Now, let us say I were given this circuit and asked to compute I L. Now, there are independent sources inside and there is one independent source outside which is V L. Okay. How would I go about solving for I L? I could use superposition. I can think of this as superposition of two cases. I will indicate a plus here to indicate superposition and what are the two cases? One in which the internal sources are active and V L is set to 0. That is V L is replaced by a short circuit. I will compute I L 1 okay. and the other case is where the internal independent sources are all nulled or deactivated. I will have only this V L to be active and I compute I L 2. My I L in the original case would be the sum of these two cases I L 1 plus I L 2. 
basically i have these independent sources vl and all of the internal independent sources in one case i activate all the internal independent sources but null vl and in the other case i deactivate all of the independent sources and activate only vl okay now let's go step by step what is this in this case what i have done is to have all the internal independent sources to be active okay so these are all active and i terminate the output or these terminals 1 and 1 prime where i want to find the equivalent with a short circuit okay because when i set vl equal to 0 that's what i get i have a short circuit and i measure the current through that short circuit okay here i called it il1 but this is usually called in the norton current okay it's the norton current or the short circuit current okay so i terminate 1 1 prime with a short circuit and measure the current in the short circuit in the right direction okay going from 1 to 1 prime that gives me the short circuit current or the norton current okay and let me look at the second case where all the internal sources are nulled right all the internal sources are nulled independent sources are nulled we have only linear resistors and linear control sources and we know that such a network consisting of linear resistors and linear control sources looks like a resistor from these two terminals okay and i'm considering the case with this nulled and looking in here it always looks like some resistor what it means is that if i applied some v test and measure i test v test by i test would be some constant which is given by r equivalent in this particular case i'll call it rn the norton resistance okay so this is equivalent to having the norton resistance rn okay and it's driven by this vl and I am measuring I L 2 in that direction. Okay. So, clearly I L 2 would be minus V L divided by R n okay. and I have to superpose this with the short circuit current to get the total current. I will do that later. If you recall what we calculated for the Thevenin equivalent in Thevenin equivalent also there was a resistance R T H. It was exactly the same thing. We deactivated the internal sources and found the resistance looking in. The only difference is there we were applying a current and here we happen to be applying a voltage, but it does not matter whether you apply a voltage or current the ratio V test by I test remains exactly the same. So, although I call it R n just to be consistent with the notation for Norton's equivalent it is exactly equal to R T H the Thevenin resistance. The Thevenin resistance and Norton resistance are one and the same thing. Okay. So, now let us go about our uh, superposition, 
with the full circuit that is with the independent sources active and we have all the components in place. If we apply V L, we have a certain current I L and from the two cases that we took for superposition, we know that this I L equals I N the short circuit current or the Norton current minus V L divided by R N. Okay. Now, this entire thing can be represented using a simple equivalent. Okay. The current I N which corresponds to this particular term okay. and then I have the voltage V L over there and to get this term I simply connect a resistance R n. Okay. So, clearly you see that the current flowing here is V L divided by R n, the current flowing that way is I n the short circuit current. So, the current flowing here is nothing but this current minus that current which is I n minus V L divided by R n. Okay. This is fine. If you recall with the Thevenin equivalent, we had got V L to be V T H minus I L times R T H and we have a similar equation here. There we could emulate the output voltage using a voltage V T H in series with a resistance R T H. Here we emulate the output current I L using a current source I n in parallel with a resistance R n which also is equal to R T H. Okay. And this particular circuit is the equivalent of this at the terminals 1, 1 prime. Okay, this is 1 and 1 prime and this is known as Norton's equivalent circuit of the network N. Okay. So, as I said it is the dual of the Thevenin's equivalent there we have a voltage source here we have a current source. Okay. We can state Norton's theorem in a way similar to Thevenin's theorem. Any circuit with independent sources and linear components that is linear resistors and controlled sources can be represented at two terminals by a current source in parallel with a resistor. Okay. And what is this current source? This is I n which is the current flowing in the short circuit between two terminals and this resistor R n is nothing but resistance looking into the two terminals
with the independent sources deactivated or nulled that is they are set to 0. Okay. So, exactly the dual of Thevenin's theorem. Now, the same circuit n can be represented by its Thevenin's equivalent V T H in series with R T H or by the Norton equivalent which is I n in parallel with R n, R n of course, is equal to R T H. Again the equivalence holds for the circuit between these two again the equivalent holds at these two terminals 1 and 1 prime and what it means is that if any circuit is connected to these two terminals 1 1 prime you connect it to either the full circuit or the Thevenin equivalent or the Norton equivalent the currents and voltages at these terminals will be exactly the same and consequently those in the circuit that you connect will also be exactly the same. Okay. So, when you are interested in modeling this circuit you can you can either use this or that one. Now, one thing I want to point out is the relationship between the values V T H and I n. These two are also exactly equivalent to each other that is what it means right because this circuit is equivalent to this which is equivalent to that. So, these two are so equivalent to each other or the relationship between I n and V T H can be easily found out by considering the open circuit voltage between these two okay? because this circuit should also have exactly the same open circuit voltage as this one if they are to be equivalent. The open circuit voltage in this case in the Thevenin's case obviously equals V T H no current flows through R T H V T H is the open circuit voltage in fact that is the definition of V T H and in this case if you do not have anything connected to 1 and 1 prime all of this I n flows into R n. Okay. So, the voltage across 1 and 1 prime is simply I n times R n or I n times R T H. Okay. So, this is the relationship between the Thevenin voltage and the Norton current of a given circuit. Okay. 